Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach, and you're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a terrific matchup on tap between the Atlanta Falcons and the Philadelphia Eagles. With that, let's get up to the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. We're standing by for the call are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, it's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. Just a short time ago, these Philly fans in full roar as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. Pyrotechnics ablaze. They're set to go as their Eagles will match up with the Atlanta Falcons. And hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that could have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. They'll be led out by a man in his 11th year now at the helm of the Falcons, the 2016 NFL MVP, Matt Ryan. What a season Matt Ryan had in 2016 where he led the NFL in so many different categories as a quarterback. Numbers dropped in 2017, but the team still qualified for the playoffs, took down the higher-seeded Rams in L.A. before losing a tough one in Philadelphia to the eventual Super Bowl champions. Matt Ryan, he makes them go in Atlanta. They go play action here on first down. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. Here now the offensive starters for Atlanta. Four straight seasons of 1,000 yards for Julio Jones as wide receiver. One of the strongest receivers in the league. Runs over defensive backs, but also thinks his way through the game. Really knows how to collaborate with his quarterback, Matt Ryan. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Second and ten. It's Ryan again. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. And the big meet on the D-line. We'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. the play fake to Freeman it's Ryan and some room to roam now and he'll get it up near the 35 right at the 34 here it's a gain of seven and that'll bring up fourth down Fourth down, here's Matt Bosher on the punt. Back deep is Darren Sproles. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Philadelphia Eagles offense coming out there. Carson Wentz leading them. Speaking of Carson Wentz, Charles, a lot of people wondering, when will he return? Week one game is a big one against the Atlanta Falcons. And that's all he's pointed towards since he got hurt. To be back there as a starting quarterback week one, he's not cleared for contact yet, though. So he's moving around. We're seeing a lot of videos of his workouts. He looks great, but no contact so far. No preseason play so far. 
I think Nick Foles will be the quarterback on opening night against Atlanta. Even though he hasn't played well in the preseason, even though he hurt his shoulder, he should be the guy and buy some more time for Carson Wentz. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at the 20. Now a play fake here on first down. And incomplete to open things up. He was trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time. And now it's second down. And the tight end, Zach Ertz, is key in this offense as we get a look at the starters. Comes out of the factory known as Stanford, which keeps putting out tight ends. Zach Ertz, one of the better ones we've seen in recent years. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Wentz will try again on second down. And he's got the veteran here. It's Mike Wallace. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. Well, that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And here now the defensive starters for Atlanta. And Grady Jarrett, their defensive tackle, not just a space eater, although he plays the run very well, knows how to get to the quarterback and provide that pressure in his face up the middle. Remember his three sacks in the Super Bowl against New England. going to set him back five yards. Still second down. Field. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. the passer they would just tell you just cover people for me just long enough for me to get there and that's exactly what happened on that play so on comes the eagle kicker jake elliott on fourth down justin hardy deep for atlanta It's fielded at the 34. 
And just a net of 31 here. 40-yard punt, nine on the return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their own 43. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll run for the first time with Devontae Freeman. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave him with a third down and six to go. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Ryan now off the bootleg. He sets to fire deep. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Eagles offense trotting back out there, and believe it or not, yes, there are already some concerns on Philly Talk Radio because they just have not looked that sharp in the preseason. And that's just how it is in Philadelphia. If everything's not perfect, people are going to start to rumble despite a Super Bowl win. And that evidence you're talking about, Five to nothing shut out by the Cleveland Browns, who went 0-16 last year. That happened in week three of the preseason. They're 0-3 in the preseason. And is Nick Foles going to be their starting quarterback? That's what they're expecting on opening night against Atlanta. Wentz now on first down. Caught right side is Jeffrey. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A gain of six there on first. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle it, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that and the hole closes quickly he gets it across the 35 to the 36 yard line the tackle made there by tack mckinley that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line yeah defensively all i'm thinking is that on that play get me to third down get me into a position where i can make one more play and get my defense off the field This is a Ajayi. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. That good for 19 at a first down. 
That's another nice run, and I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. Some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open. While other coaches said, you know something, until they stop him, that big boy's going to keep getting the football, and that might be the direction that they're going to go right now. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10, right at the 40. Wentz now on first down. That's caught by the big tight end, Dallas Goddard. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Can't have enough good pass catching tight ends in the NFL. And the Eagles, they wanted to replenish their stock. They lost Trey Burton in the offseason. So they selected Dallas Goddard out of South Dakota State in the second round. And he is nothing but a big-time pass catcher. What a great story, because South Dakota State didn't offer him a scholarship out of high school. He walked on there. Yeah, so now Zach Ertz has a running mate at tight end. First catch for the Eagles' leading receiver from a year ago. It's a first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. They run with a jive. And give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Wentz to throw on second down. That is caught at the seven. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. First time that they called his number tonight, and it gets him a first down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. throw it's wins feeling the pressure here and taken down a sack back at the seven that i'm struggling to understand a little bit that close to the goal line first down run the football if you want to throw it throw some play action on second down Now from the seven, here's second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle. He gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. Defense may be thinking pass. They come out in the nickel on third and goal. Shotgun now for Wentz. This will be caught at about the five. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. 
Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went you went backwards on the yardage. It kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Now to try the Eagle field goal, Jake Elliott from the right hash here should be an easy one. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. That's our ball, baby. Go in the other so the way. next time we leave one of those coaches' meetings and, and we're walking out in the hall and you're like, how come we spend so much time talking about special teams? Here you go. This is why. This is why, right? And then look, I'm, I'm right there with you. We hear it every time we meet with coaches. But it is a big part of it. And look at how early in the game this occurs. They block a kick. And not only does it set a tone, it sends a message for the rest of the game. Yeah, so much for our first points of the game. So now a chance for points in the opposite direction after the blocked field goal. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. And that's incomplete. Nigel Bradham, the linebacker, right there on the coverage. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They go play action with Ryan. He's airing it out for Sanu. A battle for it and it's intercepted. Picked off by Rodney McLeod. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. Ah, oh, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and ten at their own 24. So after the INT, here's Wentz. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, now, just a right, little bit now. too much. Go. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Once again here on second and ten. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Well, it's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. Come on now, the Eagles come on, on now. third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Play action. Now Wentz. He's going to air one out. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Ricardo Allen with a pick. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. The good old cover three defense, partner. When you start playing football as a safety, that's the first thing you're taught. Middle of the field, be as deep as the deepest receiver in any zone, and break on the football when it's thrown, and pick it off, just as we saw there.
Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Ryan will bring the Falcons up now first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. After the interception, here's Ryan. And his throw here is incomplete. Austin Hooper, the tight end, was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. And his first half struggles continue. He has yet to complete a pass. Hard to believe. It is because I don't see anything wrong with him physically. Maybe he's a little amped up to begin with. Would have thought he would have settled down by now. I think someone's got to get in his ear, got to be a psychologist a little bit, and get him back on track. Second and 10 now, Ryan. Man open, that's Calvin Ridley. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. So finally completes his first pass. Credit the defense, though. They've been showing him some different looks, keeping him off balance. Yeah, I like, it. I like the observation that you had there because when you give him different looks and give any quarterback different looks, it takes just a little bit longer to process sometimes, and you don't throw the ball with the same confidence. You're not sure that that's where you should go with the football, and that's worked for the defense early in this game. And now he's got his first completion. Let's see if his confidence comes back, and he starts to get into a nice little groove. Ryan to Sanu, good for an Atlanta first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. Midfield now. Here's Ryan. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. The Falcons on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third down and 12. From the shotgun, Ryan. Looking deep for Julio. Jones breaking from the contact. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. But one thing's for sure, when you've got a big receiver, and you trust him downfield, you're going to give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively. Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. Here comes the pressure, and the Eagles get there to block it. And they'll wind up taking over in their own territory inside the 35-yard line. And with points at an extreme premium here in a 0-0 game, that could be a big special teams play right there. That's an advantage play. Someone create an advantage for their team, give them an opportunity, and special teams is usually a terrific starting point for that. Blocking the punt, now they've given themselves a chance and have seized momentum.
Now it's Ajayi. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And now running right through him. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Tackle made there by Robert Alford. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's given us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. So a turnover-filled first quarter of play comes to an end. Nothing, nothing, our score. And we're back to Philadelphia after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two. They've got a second down at five here to start things out. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be dropped at the 23 after a pickup of about four. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The Eagles on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Here's a Jay. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. He needed a yard. That's what he got. And it's going to earn him a new set of downs. We ought to come up with a T-shirt and sell it that says, no indecision on third and one. And we didn't see it on that run, did we? Got his shoulders square, just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up. Absolutely. Picked his lane, went with it, and converted. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. From the gun, it's Wins. Hurts over the middle. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. A gain of six there on first. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Here we go, here we go. On second down, here's Wentz. And he's caught right at the 10 yard line. And Eagle first down, Wentz hooking up with Jeffrey. Try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. 
Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Here we go, here we go. Which one now Wentz throwing on second down. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Mike Wallace, the intended receiver. And that'll make it third down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe tap sequence, right? I was ready to call him tippy toes if that one was completed. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Wentz now on third and goal. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. He had his lone attempt blocked earlier. And the kick by Elliott is good. And the Eagles, they take a 3-0 lead. So this time, the protection holds up for him just fine, and he's able to bang it through. I think their special teams coach got the point across. He gave him a pretty good earful after the block earlier. And this time, there's no penetration, so they're able to pick up three. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. On the return, here's Justin Hardy. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Matt Ryan and the offense heading back onto the field. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their own 26. Now Ryan on first down. He completes it to Julio Jones. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. And that's the connection, Ryan to Jones, that this defense obviously has to key in on. Certainly feels like they got the party started with that one, doesn't it? And when those two get in sync, it just scares the heck out of defenses because he can hit Julio Jones in a short zone, and he can take it the whole way. They go play action here on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. A gain of six there on first. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion. So here's second and four. On second down, Ryan. And Jones has it over the middle. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Ryan to Jones, the Falcon connection there for a first. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense.
So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 49-yard line. This is Freeman on first and 10. And across the midfield, stripe into Eagle territory. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Freeman again. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. Yeah, once more, strong running, excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. Play fake here on first down. And he will find Ridley on the left side. And he's going to go out of bounds. He takes this one down shy of the 20. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Ryan in the offense with a first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Ryan on the handoff. It's Freeman. And he's going to get this one down inside the 15. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Second down. This is intercepted. Picked up by Sidney Jones. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Bashed it. <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> they'll begin the drive with Sproles and they'll get him down up past the 15 try to find some space to operate and now they'll have it a gain of 12 a big first down to get away from the end zone I guess it's good we can't really read the mind of the defensive coordinator now huh had him pinned back there deep give up that run can't be happy. Yeah, whatever was come, whatever's in his mind right now, we probably couldn't say over the air. Hang in there now. Hang in there now. Hey, down, down. Touch. Touch. And they'll run it here. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. 
Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Right back to him on first down. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Now a handoff looking right. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. The Eagles on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. Here it's third and three. Working from the gun, Wentz. And this is going to be incomplete. The Eagles send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Fielded just inside the 20. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So out come the Falcons now. And two interceptions already here in this first half. Well, that's got to affect him a little bit, right? He's got to be thinking about it. He's got to be thinking about it, but most of the good ones, they find a way to put it aside. They're not happy about it by any stretch of the imagination. They find a way to put it aside and continue to play their game. Yeah, can he put it aside? Let's find out. Ryan will bring the Falcons up now first and 10 at about the 32. The drive will start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. Swings it out to the flat for Freeman. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together, when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why, what we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play, one-on-one -on -one matchup if someone's trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield. After the catch, when they're running with the ball, they think they're going to win those, too. Ryan now has hit on just 7 of 17 passes, 41%. Off the play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Philadelphia after this.
We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime need to give the, Need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Second down, here's Ryan. Throw right side, caught by Ridley. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. That catch good for five, it's third down. Again, Ryan. And he's gonna go out of bounds, taking it down inside the 25. That one goes for 24 yards. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw ten interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. Ryan in the offense with a first and ten. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Play action, Ryan. He couldn't quite hold it, got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. Trying to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know there's usually a nice comfort zone in throwing to the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Second and ten, it's Ryan again. The throw to the left side, caught by Coleman. They'll get a couple yards on that one, and they're going to have a third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The Falcons on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and eight. To throw again is Ryan. Going underneath, it's Coleman. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're gonna get a timeout instead. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Julio Jones, the lone receiver left. Ryan will throw again. This is caught. It's Sanu this time for a Falcon touchdown. Mohamed Sanu from three yards out. And the Falcons are in for six. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown Marty there. Are you looking forward? Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. Now Matt Bryant on for the point after. Bryant tacks on the extra point, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. So that drive consumes nine plays, all told. And the Falcons score to cap it off.
Here's Bosher to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Jay Ajayi works his way back onto the field. And the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes, you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space, and just don't get totally away from running it because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with a run so far. Throwing on first is Wentz. Caught right side is Jeffrey. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Wentz to throw on second down. He's going to sling this deep downfield. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. Well, partner, they're not content to run this one out as we head towards the half, trying to hit a big chunk play right there and add to their score. Now, this is a confident group. At the very least, they're thinking field goal. Yeah, and I don't blame them one bit. I don't think you sit on the ball going into the half when you have a chance to put some more points on the board. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Wentz looking to throw on third and two. And Jeffrey's got it. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. That goes for a gain of 31. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. up second down anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field makes it very hard to slot one in looked like i4 at rush hour in your hometown of orlando florida an absolute mess an incomplete pass on first down that leads to a second and ten back to the air on second down wins and some room to work and he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout. As they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. The Eagles on third down. They've converted three times in eight chances. This is third and four. Hey, here we go, here we go. From the gun, it's Wins. And he connects with Ertz. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. And Eagle first down there, Wins to Ertz. And the names that end in TZ. Now a 
a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. And remember, he had one blocked earlier. And Elliott puts this one through. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. drive with Coleman and he'll go down right at the 30 yard line so we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report Coach Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We want to remind you that new this year in regular season games, I'll take you around the NFL, give you stats and scores from games in progress, as well as look back at games that have already been completed. So keep an eye out for that, but for now, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Out come the Eagles now as he'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and ten, just shy of the 30. Here's a handoff to Ajayi to begin the drive. 
And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 10 yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. The more football I watch, the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half, things haven't worked so well in the first go round. They want to throw the football on, like crazy. But the go. way to open up throwing the ball is to run it. And they've run it well here to start the second half. Wentz now on first down. This one complete to Sproles. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. It'll be a three-yard gain, and it'll bring up a second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Now Wentz throwing on second down. He finds Aguilar over the middle. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. That catch good for five. It's third down. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. Has a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal game. The Eagles on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. They're up against a third and one situation. And they'll go on the ground. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. That's a tremendous group effort there because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. Accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. They go play action here on first down. Now he'll let it go deep left side. That's caught at the 25. And they're able to get this one down to the 25. Give him 30 yards there. Great patience in the pocket. Of course, it's easy to be patient when the protection's good, and it was. Yeah, you've got to pat those guys on the helmet and say thanks because they gave him plenty of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through the reads that he wanted to, and deliver the ball accurately. That was really well executed. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 25-yard line. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he's going to take this down to about the 17. Just what you want on a first down run, call it eight yards, and it's second and two. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still. Got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Four down, four down. 
They stay on the ground. Again, it's Ajayi. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is a well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. He can run for it, and he will. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. He'll grab three yards on the play, taking it himself for the first down. Running the ball served them well all game long, and there's another example as they pick up a first down. down Wentz he's gonna leave this for his running back it's complete and he goes backwards here losing yardage back to the 16. well that was a simple throw and catch but even with that completion zero yards gained so they're behind schedule on down and distance I think they were hoping to get it to him he can make a man or two miss but that window closed quickly Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. The quarterback run good for 10 that time, but it does lead to a third down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. So they need two yards here on third down. Remember, they're already 2-2 two two on third down conversions on this drive. To throw, it's Wentz. Down he goes. Pressure gets him back at the 14. How about that one? The so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. Now to try the Eagle field goal, Jake Elliott. And the kick by Elliott is good. And they jump back in front here. It's nine to seven. All nine points for him coming via the field goal. And this last one puts him out in front. All the field goals are great, but you know I'm gonna get pessimistic here, right? Because you can't score touchdowns to win games in the NFL. I just wonder if all these field goals, great now, or if they'll come back and haunt them later on. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. Now Hardy on the return. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. 
try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. Now a play fake here on first down. And nearly picked off there, almost intercepted. Instead, second down. As we inch closer to the regular season, I'm just peering down at some of the preseason records. Right now, Ravens 4-0, Bengals, Panthers, Cardinals, all 3-0. I guess my question is, what stock do you put in these preseason records? No, the easy answer is nothing, because <laughs> the preseason doesn't really matter. But some organizations do put more stock in it than others. Some of them want to win every preseason game. Others don't worry about that at all. Intel has told me that only one team has won the Super Bowl after going 0-4 in the preseason, and that was in a strike year, I believe, when Washington did it. So for the most part, you just don't want to go winless in the preseason. But remember this, the Browns and the Lions both went 4-0 preseasons, then they went 0-16 in the regular season. Speaking of winless teams, Eagles and Falcons both winless right now could be Super Bowl contenders. I still think that they're going to be, whether they go winless or not. On third down, Ryan. And incomplete. The contact made the ball run free and brings up fourth down. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Matt Bosher now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Here's a handoff to Sproles to start the drive. And he'll take this up to about the seven or eight yard line. Tackle made by Devondre Campbell. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. On second down, here's Wentz. Vic Beasley in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. All right, let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third and long coming up, back near your own goal line. I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle? Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. you got to try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. And indeed, that's what they'll do as they run it here. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. Well, just like you said, they've got the lead, don't do anything silly, run the football, and that's what they did. They would have liked to have created a little more room for their punter. But he'll take what they gave him, and he'll go out there now and try and get the ball off and help his defense. The Eagles send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. And he's able to get it out of there. 
And he'll take it on this side of midfield. A 46-yard boot, but just 36 following a pretty decent return of 10 yards. And the Falcons are set up well to begin their drive as it'll begin in enemy territory already. Atlanta now coming out on the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. They'll try to get the ground game going with Freeman. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. At this stage of the game, the run-pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. to the 33. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. That defensive front four has been very good. They've just not let the running game get going, have they? Not at all. In fact, the entire offense just looking a little bit out of sync in this one. Yeah, sometimes this is why coaches like four down defensive linemen. They feel like they can cover more ground when defending the run. Second down. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. The Falcons on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and 11. From the gun, it's Ryan. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Bryant's kick is good. And they take the lead here by a point, 10-9. to nine. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent, that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. Here's Bosher to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. On first and 10, here's Wentz. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. A gain of six there on first. 
I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Completes it to Aguilar. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Try the ground game here with the running back. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? Lob has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. going to do it for this third quarter of action. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Wentz will try again on second down. Hurts over the middle. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Second down pass play got them eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. The Eagles send out their punter now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game 
are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. And the drive starts with a handoff to Coleman. And a great move on the play as he takes this one past the 25. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. On second down, here's Ryan. Throw right side, caught by Ridley. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. The Falcons on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. Here it's third and two. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation when they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. They'll eat some clock with Freeman. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Tenth carry for Freeman. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. Drops it off for Coleman. Call it a pickup of seven, and that's going to make it fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. 
Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. They'll start out on the ground with a giant. And that gets him a little room as he'll take this up over the 10-yard line. Seven yards on the pick up there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw him through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. Shotgun now for Wentz. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. That eagle first down, Wentz to Ertz. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. Throwing on first is Wentz. This complete left side to Aguilar. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Wentz to throw on second down. It's complete. It scrolls. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. At five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that? Second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Again, they'll throw with Wentz. It's caught by Aguilar. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Here we go, here we go. Like 20, now they try the right side here. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Oh, partner, that play brought back memories. Watching them string it out. Letting the runner get all the way to the sideline area, but not letting him get out of bounds. They formed that picket fence and didn't allow him through. Not only that, got him for a loss as well here. And one of the reasons they lead in the fourth quarter, plays like that. Yeah, it took a little more time off the clock, making him do it that way, didn't they? Wentz going to try and throw on third. That's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, 
and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Wentz going to lead his guys up first and ten, and he's hit on all five of his pass attempts on this drive so far. Wentz now on first down. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And a short game there down to the 37-yard line. It'll be a pickup of just two, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. The battle in the trenches never more important than right now. This is third and inches. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. The best offenses and the ones that win are ones that make adjustments. And right now, I think this team needs to open things up. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. So a big, big kick coming now for Jake Elliott. This for the lead in the final stages. And this is good from 57 yards out. That was bombs away right there. You talk about a big kick under pressure in the fourth quarter. I mean, that wasn't like a 33-yarder. That was long distance. Not only does it show the faith that they have in him, but also remember, if they'd missed that one, they're giving up the ball near midfield. So they had to be very confident that he was going to put that one through the post. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Matt Ryan and the offense heading back onto the field. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth-quarter comeback? And it's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. Back to throw. Going underneath, it's Coleman. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. Oh, 
Ryan now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. He's back to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Freeman. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and that'll make it a second down. He'll look to throw. And this would have been intercepted if he could have gotten the feet in. He didn't, so it's incomplete. Boy, that one really could have turned this thing upside down. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. On third down, Devontae Freeman. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Now on fourth down, we've got a whistle here and a timeout as they stop it prior to what will be an important fourth down. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Gotta try it here, he's back to throw. And he can't get a throw off, he's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Derek Barnett able to get him for a loss of about three. So now let's reset here, Charles. They do have two timeouts left, so they can stop the clock twice. This one's not quite over yet. No, and what you're doing on defense, you're going to use both timeouts, obviously. But you've got to call defenses that are going to force the issue early, meaning you want that play over fast. You don't want to give them time to dance around in the backfield or run a wide sweep that'll take off time. Blitz them, put pressure on them, make sure that play ends quickly so that you can go ahead and keep moving. And out now come the Eagles. They have the football, they're looking good, but the lead is just two, so any mistake in a field goal can beat you. They gotta be careful. And that's where it gets difficult because you don't want that to leak into your thinking. You wanna play like, hey, we've got the advantage. We can close this out. Don't play from fear, and they can win this game. See if they can play fear-free and hang on. And on the ground they go with the running back. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. And the Falcons gonna use another timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. again with a Jay. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Go, go. 
And they'll run it here. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And this will be spotted on the other side of the field. It's a 61-yard attempt. And this won't get there. Won't be on line either. It's no good. Off to the right. And this score will stay right where it is. So in a game that's been full of twists and turns, here's another with time winding down. And now, as you say, time's obviously a huge factor. But all you're looking for now is three. So one big play, maybe a penalty, and you might get that shot after all. Matt Ryan and the offense heading back onto the field. It's a pretty simple formula, Charles. A field goal, all you need, that wins you the game. And the most confident guys going out on the field to direct their teams, they probably already talked to their kicker before they went out and let him know, don't worry, you've got a chance to be a hero in this one. I'll set you up, you just knock it through the post. His plan, get the team downfield and get them into position. They've gone over it many times in practice. That's how he's going to approach it. And now on the sideline, everyone stay away from the kicker. <laughs> They'll look to throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Jones. And he's brought down. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. And he'll spike it here with 13 seconds showing on the clock. And that one is incomplete, and it stops the clock at 12 seconds left in the half. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. This to almost certainly win the football game. And now the Eagles going to signal for a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. This to almost certainly win the football game. And off the crossbar, and it kicks back out. Needed maybe a foot or two, but it's no good as it stands. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, that would have been something if he could have saved him from that long distance there in the closing seconds, but it was just not meant to be. They need a little more time and a little more yardage to give him a realistic shot. And that kick's a good metaphor for this game, isn't it? They're going to wind up a little short in the end. The Eagles in good position to start out as they come up first and ten. Wentz with a kneel down, and that will be the final act of this game. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory.
So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Eagles are winners here as we say so long from Philadelphia.